Hey, welcome to another episode of Gibbon Travelogue. And we are now at Kruger National Park. Today, we are diving into an exciting topic for all you adventure seekers out there. If you have ever dreamt of going on a thrilling safari without breaking the bank, you are in the right place. We are going to show you how to plan a value for money safari trip to the incredible Kruger National Park in South Africa, which offers an unforgettable experience that won't drain your wallet. Before we get into the nitty gritty, Let's take a moment to appreciate the stunning beauty of Kruger National Park. With its diverse wildlife, expansive landscapes and rich biodiversity, it's no wonder this park is the top choice for nature enthusiasts. Kruger National Park is one of the largest game reserves in Africa. It covers an area of 19,600 square kilometers in northeastern South Africa. This is 27 times bigger than Singapore, or roughly the size of Wales in the UK. Areas of the park were first protected by the government in 1898 and it became South Africa's first national park in 1926. One of the standout features of Kruger National Park it is affordability. When compared to other African national parks, Kruger offers an exceptional value for your money. The entrance fees are reasonable at 460 rand per day. If you are going to be there for more than 6 days, you will be well worth signing up for a wild card which will enable you to visit all South African parks that are managed by sand parks for one year. Another major advantage of Kruger National Park is its accessibility. Located around 5 hours away from OR Tembo Airport in Johannesburg, it's easily reachable from major cities. You won't need to spend days travelling to get to your safari destination, making it an ideal choice for those with limited time. One of the best ways to move from the airport to the park is to pick up a rental car from the airport and drive around 500 kilometers to the park gate of your choice. When choosing a car, a taller car with a good suspension will be ideal as this car will also serve as a safari car inside the reserve. Kruger has an excellent network of both tarred and dirt roads. Accommodations are offered at the 12 rest camps situated strategically across Kruger National Park. Each rest camp offers a variety of accommodations to suit different preferences and budgets. From basic campsites for the rugged adventurers to bungalows and guest cottages for those seeking a bit more comfort. There's something for everyone. These rest camps are managed by the South African National Parks or Sand Parks. The official website of Sand Parks, www.sandparks.org, is a fantastic resource. You can visit the site to check availability of the accommodation options and make the bookings online. To make the bookings, click on to book online. Select Kruger National Park Your choice of rest camp I'll select the most accessible rest camp from Paul Kruger Gate Skuskuza Rest Camp And select the dates that I'll be staying in Kruger National Park and Finally, click search here are the indicative prices for the various types of accommodations. Campsites are priced at 430 Rand per night. Safari tents are priced at 800 Rand per night. Bungalows are priced at 1760 Rand per night. If you like to go for a bungalow with a riverside view, 
it will cost you slightly more 2,460 Rand Guest cottages for 4 people are priced at 3,150 Rand per night Where you stay will depend on what kind of animals you would like to spot during your visit here one of the simplest ways to spot animals is to look for the right species in the right places. Herbivores are adapted to specific areas with certain types of vegetation. The carnivores, in turn, will be in places where they can hunt their favourite prey more successfully. Here are some of the most popular rest camps in Kruger National Park. Skuskuza Camp is like the capital of Kruger National Park. It is the biggest rest camp and includes facilities such as a grocery cum souvenir shop and two restaurants, Kettle Baron on the Sabi River Bank and Salati at the Old Salati Railway Station. Besides its proximity to Paul Kruger Gate, what makes Kuskuza such a compelling rest camp to stay is the wildlife that can be found both within the camp and its surrounding area. Lions are frequently spotted just outside the camp. The scenic drive on the H41 along the Sabi River has large sycamore, makula and jackalberry trees above the thick riverine bush. This is one of the most fruitful game drives in the reserve, offering a high possibility of spotting a leopard and the rest of the big five. In the evening, you can almost for sure find fruit bats hanging under the eaves of the shop and shelters. The cries of the thick-tailed bush baby can frequently be heard up in the trees in search of gum. Satara is cat country. The savanna plains dotted with knob thorn and marula trees attract large herds of antelope which in turn entice lions, leopards, cheetahs and hyenas. The openness of the plains also makes it easy to spot smaller carnivores such as the honey badger and African wildcat. After Skuskuza, Satara is the second largest camp in Kruger. The camp itself has a rustic charm, with the bulk of the accommodation set out in a series of circles. The camp itself is also well wooded with marula and knob thorn trees, resulting in a prolific bird life. Oh, what happened? At night, hyenas can be seen just beyond the perimeter of the rest camp. Roars of lions are also commonly heard. While sightings, especially big cat sightings, are never guaranteed, Satara Rest Camp has certainly gained a reputation for being a hotspot for predator sightings in Kruger Park. The Lower Sebi Rest Camp sits on the bank of the Sebi River one of the few perennial rivers to flow through the Kruger National Park. Crocodiles, hippos and various water birds are common residents and can be easily seen from the comfort of the camp's restaurant. Most of the larger rest camps has restaurants that cater to visitors. Restaurant chains such as Kettle Baron and Muck and Bean provide South African delicacies. Many of the accommodations in the rest camps come with a kitchen and a barbecue pit that guests can prepare their own dinner. Meat, seasonings and other ingredients can be found in the well-stocked park shops. When you're out of the rest camps doing your game drives, there are picnic spots which you can stop for breakfast or lunch. Some of these picnic sites even have restaurants where you can have a comfortable meal before resuming your game drives. Alternatively, you can pack some food from the park shop, rent a scuttle at a picnic site and cook your own meal there. Having a picnic at one of these spots is both convenient and truly enjoyable. Typically, 
These sites often have shady trees to sit under. Interestingly, they are also unfenced, which means there is a chance that wild animals could stray in. Here are some of the popular picnic sites that you are likely to visit. Nukulu is a popular picnic site when we move along the H41 between the Skuskuza and Lower Sabi Rest Camps. It is located on the banks of the Sabi River. Visitors can enjoy the wildlife and views of the Sabi River seated on the benches under mahogany trees. Sokwani Picnic Site is another popular stop between Skuskuza and Satara Rest Camps. Under the shade of sausage trees and surrounded by the open untamed bush, visitors to the Sokwani Trading Post and Picnic Site can look forward to an enjoyable meal at a cafe or simply cook your own. Sokwani was established in 1928 Initially, as a ranger post at Kruger Park's first warden, James Stevenson Hamilton, and was named after a local Shangaan chief known as Shokwani. The look and feel of this trading post is vintage and genuine, and takes you on an almost nostalgic journey back in time to another era in South Africa's history with its rustic deco and stoic style seating. Hey, good morning! We are at the Tessowani picnic site and this place is very beautiful we're gonna have our breakfast here place has got a problem it has a baboon monkey problem so can you see the family over there so I think they didn't guard their food properly so one of the baboons came you know and then snatched something uh, and the staff say you know oh you know make sure that you protect your staff so he went there with the kettle pot so I was looking at him uh, trying to trying to shoot the baboons, you know, so that they will not come. Another busy picnic spot is the Afsal Traders Rest, which means a place to break the journey, located on the junction of H3 and H22, between the Skuskuza Rest Camp and Melodani Gate. It is especially popular with tourists entering or leaving the park due to its proximity to the Malelane Gate. Afsa'al is situated on the bank of a dry riverbed and it's not uncommon to see the Big Five in the surrounding bushveld. Within the picnic spot is the Tinluvu Cafe run by the Tinluvu Group which you can experience South African inspired cuisine. And I was asking one of the staff here hey, I, heard, I heard on the internet uh, that a hyena came to this place and he said hyena? Oh, the hyena comes every day. Around three something, he will just come out from the corner here and start scavenging for food. Wow, so exciting. Now that you are excited to plan your Kruger National Park adventure, here are a few quick tips to help you get started. Best time to go to Kruger is between June to August, the winter months, where chances of malaria is low, weather comfortable, and this is also the dry period, which means wildlife tends to gather at the water holes making wildlife viewing easier. Book early. Accommodations within the park can fill up quickly, so make sure to book your stay well in advance to secure your spot. Depending on the season, typically you can only exit the rest camp at 6am and return to the camp before it turns dark, either 5.30pm or 6pm. As a result, you could be missing out at a crucial dust period where animal activities are at its highest. Fortunately, sunset and sunrise drives are available at many rest camps at around 380 rand per drive per person. You will need to have the following ready for your trip. A good set of binoculars per person. For maximum enjoyment, try not to share binoculars so that animal spotting can be done quickly and efficiently. I would recommend an 8x42 bino for prolonged wildlife viewing. Anything more than 10 times may cause discomfort. Torchlight, you will need one to move around in a rest camp or when you are out on an evening or night safari. There are also times when nocturnal wildlife can also be had within the rest camp compound. If you are into photography, a long lens, preferably 300mm or above, will be ideal. And 
there you have it folks planning a value for money safari trip to Kruger National Park is easier than you might think with its affordability accessibility and diverse wildlife Kruger truly stands out as a top choice for an unforgettable adventure okay that wraps up our trip in Kruger National Park it has been a wonderful wonderful trip if you enjoy our video please remember to subscribe to Gibbon Travelog. Until the next video, I'll see you again.